Good morning. This object, which has a mass of 155 grams, and I will call the hanging mass, when I place it right here on the string, it will cause the right string to be completely horizontal and the left string to be at an angle of 28 degrees with the horizontal. Given those two pieces of information, we can determine the tension in each of these two strings. Flippin' physics. In order to solve this problem, we need to draw a free body diagram. That is step one. Class, what is step two? Break forces into components. Step three. Redraw the free body diagram. Step four. Sum the forces. And step five. Sum the forces again. Very nice. Step one. Billy, could you please tell me what forces are in the free body diagram? The force of gravity is straight down. The force normal is up. And, and there are two forces of tension. Each tension force is in the direction of the string. In an effort not to muddle our picture, I have drawn the free body diagram down here, where this point right here corresponds to that point right there in our picture. And also, I have identified this as force of tension one, and this one as force of tension two. Mr. P? Yes, Bob? Why is there a force normal in our free body diagram? Because Billy said there was a force normal. I thought a force normal was caused by the push of a surface. What surface is the mass hanging touching? The mass hanging isn't touching a surface, so there is no force normal. So, sorry, I, I'm just so used to having a force normal in our free body diagrams uh, that I assumed it was there. It's okay. That's absolutely fine, Billy. It's actually very common for students to add a force normal to every free body diagram, simply because it seems like every free body diagram we've done so far had a force normal in it. However, when you draw your free body diagrams, you actually you have to think through the reasons for every force and not just follow patterns. Step two, break forces into components. Bo, which force or forces do we need to break into components and why? The force of gravity is in the y direction and the force of tension two is in the x direction, so we don't need to break either of those forces into components. The force of tension one is neither directly in the x or y direction, so we need to break the force of tension one into components. Bobby, could you please break force of tension one into its components? Uh, but, um, but we don't know tension force one, so how can we break it into components? Yeah, what? Okay, now, we do not have a number for force of tension one, but that does not mean we can't break it into its components. Now, generally, many of you have what I like to call a numbers dependency. You have a really hard time moving forward if you don't have numbers for your variables. And I will help you let go of your numbers dependency. It is very important that you do so. Here's what I'd like you to do. Bobby, please solve for the force of tension one in the y direction, even though we do not have a number for the force of tension one. Uh, okay, um, so... So is correct, Bobby. You can use that. <laughs> so, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite theta is the force of tension one in the y direction over the hypotenuse, which is the force of tension one. Multiplying by force of tension one gives us force of tension one in the y direction equals force of tension one times the sine of theta. Oh, and we know say that theta, so we can plug in 28 degrees oh, for Oh, hold the on. Please, I don't plug in numbers at this point. That would just stoke your numbers dependency, which is something I am unwilling to do. Now, rather than having a number for the force of tension one in the y direction, we have an equation. And we can't do anything more with this equation, so, we need to put it in our equation holster, just in case we need to pull it out at some point and use it. <laughs> what did he just do? He put that equation in our equation holster. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense to me. Equation holster. Oh, okay, we, we save the equation for later when we need to use it. Uh, okay, I got it. That, that makes sense. We could do the same thing with cosine theta. The cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse or the force of tension one in the x direction divided by the force of tension one. Therefore, the force of tension one in the x direction equals the force of tension one times the cosine of theta. And class, we are going to put this equation in where? 
our equation holster? That's right, in our equation holster. We have completed step number two. We have broken forces into components. Bobby, could you please tell me what step number three is and do it? We need to redraw the free body diagram. Uh, we still have the force of gravity down and the force of tension two along the string to the right. Uh, instead of force of tension one, we now have force of tension one in the x direction and force of tension one in the y direction. Bo, could you please do step number four? We need to sum the forces. Let's start with the y direction. So the net force in the y direction equals the force of tension one in the y direction minus the force of gravity. And the net force is, according to Newton's second law, always equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, the acceleration in the y direction. The hanging mass isn't moving in the y direction, so its acceleration in the y direction is zero. Therefore, the tension force one in the y direction minus the force of gravity equals zero. Add the force of gravity to both sides, and we get the force of tension one in the y direction equals the force of gravity. Bo, please keep going. For the force of gravity, we can substitute mass times the acceleration due to gravity, and... Uh, oh, oh, the equation holster! Right. From the equation holster, we know the force of tension one in the y direction equals the force of tension one times the sine of theta. Dividing by sine theta gives us the force of tension one equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity divided by the sine of theta. <laughs> can we plug in numbers now? Absolutely. Now that we know everything in the equation, we can substitute in numbers. Well, wait a second. First, we need to convert the mass hanging to kilograms because force is in newtons and a newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared. So 155 grams times one kilogram over a thousand grams, and that means the mass hanging is 0 0.155 kilograms. Therefore, the force of tension one equals 0 0.155 times 9.81 divided by the sine of 28 degrees, which is 3.238854, or with two sig figs, 3.2 newtons. We've solved for force of tension one. Billy, could you please do step five? The last step is to sum the forces in a direction perpendicular to our previous step. So the net force in the x direction equals tension force 2 minus the tension force 1 in the x direction, which then is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Oh, and the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero because the mass hanging isn't moving. Hey, uh, the mass hanging is an object in equilibrium because the net force acting on it in all directions is equal to zero. Right, Mr. P? Yeah, it's in equilibrium. Bobby, that is correct. Billy, could you please continue? Sure. Uh, therefore, tension force two equals tension force one in the x direction. Uh, from our equation holster, we know tension force one in the x direction equals tension force one times a cosine of theta. Uh, therefore, tension force two equals 3.238854 times a cosine of 28 degrees, which is 2.85974 uh, with two sig figs, 2.9 newtons. We have solved for the force of tension in each of the two strings. And you may not have noticed, but these two blue items right here are force sensors. And let's go back to the very beginning when I added the mass to the string. And you can see the force that we measured using those two force sensors matches exactly what we got from solving the problem, which is nice. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.